Okay, how's it going? Uh, this is Stunt Coyote, and as you can see on the layout, um, I wanted to do a Mega Man X Starter's Guide to Speedrunning. Um, this is not a tutorial. This is more or less an avenue or a gateway into learning um, the important things, I guess, about the game. If you were to maybe start trying to do attempts or runs or maybe if you're interested in speedrunning it. So uh, we're going to be going over a couple of key things. And uh, yeah, this, so this is basically just a guide to lead you in the right direction if you choose to ever speed run Mega Man X. Uh, and a lot of this can apply to the second and third game as well. We're talking about the first game though, for the most part. So I'm actually gonna do a lot of the explaining using the practice ROM. Um, so yeah, Mega Man X, um, 2D action platformer, um, pretty well known. As you can see, uh, the first big step <laughs> in speedrunning this game is playing the Japanese version, Rockman X. Reason being, it's actually pretty simple. The text is in Japanese, um, therefore the words are actually smaller in Japanese, which means less text in the text boxes which then turns into less time spent reading things uh, I think it saves around 12 ish to 15 seconds depending on if you do the skips or not but yeah so Rockman X that's the first step if you want to really get into speedrunning this game this sort of becomes a standard um, it's not super important if you're just starting out but that's that's the start okay so this is the practice run which is a great avenue to uh, start speed running it <clears throat> or start learning what you need to uh, know okay so basically the game in general like I said 2d platformer um, very movement based let's uh, kind of get into it a little bit here let me pick a let me pick a level where we'd have mostly everything. Alright. <clears throat> Actually, you know what? Let's not... Let's not do a water-based level. Because that... That's different mechanics. Let's do Storm Eagle. Okay. So. Some important things to note about the way X moves. And just movement in general. Is you're gonna have... Uh, dashes. The very first level you play in the game, even casually pretty much, I mean you could play other levels first, but the main level you would ever play first really is going to be Chill Penguin. And about halfway through his level you're going to get the boots I'm wearing right now called Dash Boots. And um, that allows X to do this motion, or else you're kind of just walking like this forever, and it takes a very long time to play the game. So, Dash Boots, we can do this. Um, <clears throat> a thing to note is that if you're trying to, like, I guess maximize the amount of speed that X can get out of his movement, you're going to want to do frame-perfect dashing. Um, what that entails is, and then what that means is that when you dash and you jump, the frame that Mega Man X lands on the ground, he'll act. You can actually like start dashing from that exact frame, and that's frame perfect dashing. Um, it's not super important until you're trying to grind down your time even lower. Because you can get through the game and get a reasonable time without having to worry about that. You can just like dash through like this if you want. But it's pretty important that uh, when you land, you want to be minimizing the amount of frames in between dashes. And that's, that's really going to save you time. So a good way to get used to knowing if you're actually doing 
frame perfect dashing. So when X dashes, you see these little um, like uh, puffs of smoke behind them. If you jump like this, hitting the dash and jump, and you're uh, jumping through the air like that, and you see that he has like the little puff of smoke behind him, like the one or whatever, you know that you're doing it right and not wasting any frames if you jump and there's no smoke. So, like that. Like, that's frame perfect dashing right there. Whenever there's not, like, smoke behind them, you know you've wasted zero frames starting your next dash. And, uh, it is, it's pretty precise. It's something you've really got to get used to. And like I said, it's not that, not that big of a deal, but it is when you start, like, maximizing your, uh, you're like maximizing your time save um, another thing is wall kicks it's pretty simple but um you know just jumping off the wall holding left or right against a wall you can slide down it and then pressing jump you can actually get a kick off the wall that's pretty standard um, nothing really much to say about that um I guess the first big step in learning to speedrun this game would just be play through it a couple times casually. Really get used to like where the enemies are and what the stages are like. Because that's going to become super important when you go to actually play the game. And also learning where all of the items are. So, that's super important as well. But what, it, <clears throat> what I'm getting at here is with this game movement is everything so you really want to be aware of how many wall kicks you do in a certain room because each wall kick can lose a second so you really want to minimize the uh, frames in between dashes and you really want to minimize your wall kicks and I'll explain wall kicks a little bit more in another level um, an important thing that another runner Tiki taught me is that you want to use the full extent of your dash. So if you were to like go like halfway through your dash like that and just keep dashing, you're spending frames in between dashes and that's taking up more time. So if you just like use the full dash, you'll end up <clears throat> covering more ground in less time. So another yeah, another important thing to just be aware of is when you're dashing, make sure you're getting like the full dash out of it. Um, so I'm just moving around a little bit to kind of show you, like, in action, like what Mega Man X can do, I guess, movement-wise. Like I was saying, it's just really important to be aware of your dashes because that's literally everything. Um, there's a section up here that's really good at practicing your dashes. Um, it's this big area right here. And um, you can just kind of get used to getting the full dash and practicing. Making sure you're using the least amount of frames possible. Okay, so that's basically like that's movement in general. Um, we're gonna talk about wall kicks and uh, important things to note about that. Um, so I'm gonna talk about ladders quick because it's something that you don't really ever think about. It, it is uh, kind of rumored that um, ladder cancels save time. And uh, they might in some circumstances. I think in tasks they do. But uh, a ladder cancel, it's important for later actually too. So ladder cancels when you're almost to the top of a ladder. And you uh, decide to just like, you hit jump right here. And if you hold the direction, you can actually kind of catch the inside of the ledge. Now what you can do is you can catch that and then you can wall kick. Um, 
another, I guess another important thing to note here is that you can do regular wall kicks, which are just, um, like, jump, and then you jump off the wall, but you can also do dash kicks, which you press jump and uh, dash together, and then the direction you want to go. You see how my regular jump, I don't go out as far, but dash kicks, I go out farther? That's pretty important. So we're going to hit jump and then hold against the inside of the ladder. And then we're going to dash kick and then hold the direction we want to go. So, like that. And you can see, like, instead of having to fight this guy... And, like, get him out of the way and it'd be super annoying. And then go like this. So if we come up here and use a dash kick, we can time it to go like that and skip that entirely. So, that's pretty important in itself. <clears throat> but we're going to be talking about um, a little bit more kind of advanced... Uh, mechanics here in just a second. I ran out of health doing that demonstration. Maybe be a little bit more careful here. Alright, that's better. Alright. <clears throat> um, so, kicks in general um, are really important. And uh, once I get up to the top of this tower, we're going to talk about it a little bit. Um, wall kicks can either save and lose or lose you a lot of time. Um, reason being is if you spend more time kicking up a wall, like... Um, on, let me show you here in a second. Once there's not things in my way. If you spend more time kicking up a wall... That's obviously more seconds lost. So a good way to minimize the amount of kicks is to get like a full jump out of it. And be holding against the wall. So see how I do like three jumps like that? It's a little longer instead of just two jumps like that. It's like one, two, three, or just one, two, and you're up. That's pretty important. It's just knowing, like, getting like the maximum amount of height out of your jump. And that's just holding X, or sorry, would be B. I'm used to PlayStation right now. <laughs> uh, it's holding B, or whatever your jump button may be, to the maximum amount, just to make sure that you can cover again more ground or more of the wall with less kicks. Because it takes less time, <laughs> and, and like if you're doing that, it's just way slower. So yeah, just make sure you're getting the full height. Okay, so another thing to <clears throat> note is that um, you can actually get more distance uh, vert or uh, horizontally if you are closer or farther away to the wall. So obviously, it makes sense that. If I was up against the wall and I kick off, I'm going to end up um, more to the left when I land. If I kick off and I'm more far, like farther away from the wall when I kick, I will end up more to the right. That's pretty obvious. But there's something called a double kick, where if I jump up the wall and I actually kick and then dash kick, I can gain some extra height off of it. And as you can see, like, if I'm jumping and I just do a regular dash, I just kind of barely make it over this ledge. But if I double kick, I really make it over the ledge. So, um, just be holding against the wall, and then when you kick and then you dash kick off, just be holding the direction you want to go, and then you'll easily get over there. So, that can be a strat that's used in Iceless here, which is another thing I want to talk about. Um, there is your regular kicks off the wall, your dash kicks, 
uh, your double kick, which is what I just mentioned, to get some extra height. And then you have what's called a seven pixel wall kick. Uh, seven pixel wall kick is actually the furthest amount of pixels away from the wall to where X can actually um, kick off of it. And that's vital for getting this heart tank right here without having to use charge ice, which is either that or using a boomerang, which causes a revisit. You don't want that either. Um, a 7 pixel wall kick is essentially setting yourself up for the farthest um, pixel you kick off the wall. So what I was talking about earlier, how you'll end up more to the right the farther you kick off of a wall. There's ways of lining X up so that you kick on that 7 pixel maximum amount of pixels over. So um, you'll notice that if you are standing right next to the wall, you'll obviously get it. If you're standing a little farther away, you're not going to be able to. So you can kind of like inch yourself closer. That was that was one right there. Um, this is super important for a couple reasons. Um, mainly, um, what we call like ladder gaps. Um, there's a good uh, good spot to show you that. I feel like I couldn't really show you right here. Maybe I can show you in the beginning. I'll go back to the beginning after this and I'll show you what a ladder gap is. But ladder gaps are where you can 7 pixel wall kick off a wall and you go straight up into the gap of a ladder like this and jump straight through it. Saving a second, I think, each time you do it. But uh, I'll try to explain Iceless here. So, really if you're just like going and trying to get this... Um, regularly you're never going to be able to reach it so when you do a seven pixel wall kick you've got like two pixels to try and hit that see how I'm trying to do it normally I'm just kicking off the wall like regular I'm not reaching it well if you do like a seven pixel wall kick you can line yourself up and you can actually get to that heart and this is the strat that we call iceless then it's actually pretty difficult. Um, this is one of the hardest tricks in the game, probably. And it's extremely precise. And, um... Just like that. <clears throat> uh, there are ways of lining that up consistently. But, um... Just letting you know that the 7 pixel wall kick plays a huge part in getting that heart early. And, um, that strat right there that I just showed you... Diff is the strat that kind of differentiates the two main routes that this game has. Um, which is the iceless route, and then you have the ice full route. I can't really show you the ice full, ro ice full route right now. Um, but basically you would use a charged sled and kind of ride it off and then jump off the sled up onto that ledge. Um... But yeah, there's also a double kick strat for this, which is, in my opinion, a deal harder to get. So I don't know. Um, there's tutorials out there showing ice lists and such um, that could probably explain it a hell of a lot better than I could. But yeah, the idea is you want to line yourself up with the wall and get exactly seven pixels off the wall and then jump out to get up there. And um, it's not an easy strat by any means, but if you want to get a really good time, <laughs> it's kind of essential. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of this level and show you what a ladder gap is. Um, it also involves the 7 pixel wall kick. So you're standing right here. You see how he, he kind of just jumped through it? And you can just jump again. That's a ladder gap. So I'm jumping over. And you just do that. And you can just jump through. This one you can kind of just jump through because it's high enough. 
Um, if you can pull these off, they do save time. But they're extremely precise. <laughs> so you have to really know where on the wall, like muscle memory, where to kick. Um, it's just kind of a thing. So that's a 7 pixel wall kick, like ladder gap. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get more into like what 100% is. Obviously, it's 100% of the items, but um, in each level here, there are one heart tank per level. So each boss has one heart tank, and that increases your maximum health. Uh, there are four armor tanks. One of the armor tanks is in Chill Penguin. That's the dash boots. Another arm, <clears throat> another armor tank is in Flame Mammoth's level. That's the Buster upgrade. Um, this level right here, Sting Chameleon, has the body upgrade or the torso upgrade. And then uh, Storm Eagle here has the uh, helmet upgrade. So there's four upgrades there, and there's also four sub tanks in this game. Sub tanks are like reserve health. Um, one of the sub tanks is in Flame Mammoth. One of the sub tanks is in um, Spark Mandrel's level. And then the other two are in Armor Armadillo and Storm Eagle. So that means you have eight heart tanks, um, eight heart tanks, four sub tanks, and four armor upgrades. That's 100%. And then. After you get all of that, <clears throat> you're going to go to um, Armored Armadillo's level, and right before the ending, where the final gate is, where you go in to fight him, above the boss door, there's a health pickup. You want to see that five times, and then you'll unlock a capsule that will give you Hadoken. That's technically 100% right there. Um, if you beat the game without Hadoken, that's not 100%. You need to get Hadoken. Um, so that's what we call revisits. So yes, eight heart tanks, four sub tanks, four body armor, or, uh, four like armor upgrades, and then um, the Hadoken. So that's 100%. And then you can continue and you can beat the Sigma stages. And that would be the end of your run. Um, something I want to bring up, and I should have it in one of these final levels here. Um, not really sure which one's which. Alright, this is a... hold on. Um, okay, this is fine. Um, this attack right here is called Sea Sting. And you get it from, uh, Sting Chameleon. And when you have the Buster upgrade, you can actually charge it. And then you it goes like boom, and now you're turning a bunch of different colors, like a chameleon, and you can actually jump through stuff without taking damage. That's pretty important in the speed run. Um, reason being is uh, you, every time you bonk an enemy, that's pretty much a second or even a second and a half of time loss. So if you can jump through enemies without taking damage, that's a hell of a lot faster than actually taking a hit or stopping to fight that enemy. So that's what Charge Sea Sting is. So once you get it, you can then use that to get through enemies at your leisure. Um, okay, so as far as routing goes for 100%, you will, there's like two major routes. You will always start with Chill Penguin. That's because you have to get Dash Boots first. So the easy route, technically, like old route, would be go Chill Penguin, then you go to Storm Eagle. And I'll tell you the items as we go along. So Chill Penguin, you get the boots, and then you get the ice. Then you go to Storm Eagle, you get the heart tank, the sub tank, and then you get the head upgrade. And then you would get Tornado, which then we would go to Flame Mammoth. In Flame Mammoth, you would <clears throat> get the arm upgrade, a sub tank, and a heart tank. 
And from there we'd go to Boomer Kuanger, where you could do the charged ice sled to get the heart tank, and you'd beat him, and then you would get the boomerang, which then we would go to Sting Chameleon, whose weakness is the boomerang. You would get the torso upgrade, and you could also get um, the heart uh, tank in here, which I'll explain the strat on and get that in just a second. Uh, then we go to Spark Mandrill, where you would get the sub tank with the boomerang and the heart tank with the boomerang. Um, then you go to Armored Armadillo, where you would get the sub tank and heart tank, and then get his final, or you'd get his uh, special weapon. And you go to Launch Octopus, where you would get a heart tank and then his weapon, uh, his special weapon. Then after that, You'd have the Sigma level appear, and you'd want to go back to Chill Penguin to do the revisit to get his heart tank. And you then you'd go to Armored Armadillo, and you just play through the ending of the level five times, or four times rather, uh, to get the Hadouken. And then you would go Sigma out and just beat the game. Um, now the other route, however, just Quanger second, and that's like the harder route, which has all the new updated strats in it. So if you're interested in learning the harder version of the speedrun that uh, has a lot of the updated strats, this is what you'd want to do. Um, I believe it's called Waterfall, and uh, I mean I'm not too familiar with it yet. But what you would do is you'd want to instead of doing um, Storm Eagle second, you'd go Chill Penguin, Boomer Kuanger. Then you'd want to go Eagle, and you'd do this strat called Magic Carpet, which is insane. Um, and then you'd continue to go bam, 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 bam. But then you, you would do uh, Octopus first before Chameleon. You'd do Chameleon last, I believe. So it'd be the same route up until this, and then you would do this. Then you, then you would go back and do your revisit, then you'd do Chameleon. Then that's like new route. Um, but uh, I think in the practice room, I'm not sure how this might have water in it. It does. Okay. So I'm assuming the new practice ROM covers water full route. Um, if you're doing old route, you do what's called waterless, where this wouldn't have water in it. You would do ice, and you would break three of the top blocks, and then you'd shoot your ice out. You stand here and then you would jump over like that um, to get the heart tank, and then you go like jump back over. But uh, this practice round covers water full route, I believe. So that's how you would get that sub tank there. Um, okay, so I can't show off Mushy Pan Sled either, but another way of getting the heart tank in this level, Boomer Kuanger, is to shoot an ice sled into the wall. And uh, it's what I call the poor man's iceless. It's basically where you jump off the ice sled and get a couple more pixels of uh, space to get up there. Um, let's see. Okay, so we talked about iceless, we talked about the revisits, we talked about charge sea sting, we covered Hadoken. We covered what's what constitutes 100%. Uh, talked about moving, like uh, movement and dashing, which is super important. Um, so, what's a respectable time? I guess is a question that I've been asked a couple of times for uh, Mega Man X. And so, I guess I'd like to go over a couple milestones. Um, sub hour for Mega Man X is the first big milestone I'd say if you can beat the game in under an hour um, that's a really good starting time so anyone that's starting to run the game I really encourage um, runners to try and go for getting 59 minutes 58 minutes anything under an hour it's a solid start now that means you could probably get through the game with like subpar movement like your dashes aren't perfect that's fine you know 
It's just basically playing through the game and knowing where the items are. You could even squeak in a couple of deaths. Um, I don't think that really matters too much. Um, just getting through the game and um, a respectable time would be an hour f to start out. Um, sub 50 in Mega Man X, like anything under the hour, I kind of equate to Super Metroid time for any percent. So a sub 50 in Mega Man X would be the sub hour in Super Metroid. So sub 50 says basically that you've put a decent amount of time into your movement. You've been working a little harder on not dying and you know, and you know where all the items are and you played the game through casually enough and ran it slightly enough to be able to get that good of a time <clears throat> and um sub 50 is actually really good um you can still like have some pretty sloppy movement and get sub 50. and sub 50 is not really too incredibly difficult the uh thing about uh the times lower than that is usually I've seen most runners hit a wall around like 44 or 45. Uh, around that time is where movement really, really starts to uh, become super important. Um, just trying to get your dashes down, minimizing your wall kicks, really solidifying the route. And then eventually, once you get to sub 40, that's when, like, my buddy Crystal Unclear told me, that's kind of what separates the good players from the great players. Um, sub 40 is like a sub 50 in Super Metroid. It's basically like seasoned players can get that sub 40. And it takes a lot of work, but I know that like if people put in the work, they can easily get there. Um, it's when you start getting to like low 39 and then 38s and then eventually like 37s is when it starts to become like a really big grind and uh, that's when the game starts to get kind of annoying <laughs> when you're when you're at that level because 35 is a world record so um, you're really starting to grind your time down when you can get like 38s and 37s so I'd say a, a really good respectable time for this game would be anywhere from like 38 to 44 minutes I'd say um, but yeah so major milestones would be getting the sub hour and then getting the sub 50 would be your next big milestone and then getting a 45 would be a next big milestone and then sub 40 eventually that would be the big the big four right there so yeah, um, but really, like, getting into this game is, it's a lot of fun, um, it doesn't require massive, massive amounts of, uh, movement management, I mean, that is what the game is about, but it's not as, like, intensive as, like, if you run Super Metroid, where every single input is, like, absolutely perfect, um, that's, this game is not quite like that. It's less punishing movement-wise, I'd say, than Super Metroid is. Um, but yeah, so... <sighs> I don't know. This game is really fun to run. And if you like fast-paced like 2D platformers, this is a great one to pick up. Um, if you are looking for a 100% tutorial... Um, you can check out Tiki on YouTube. He's, a, he's an amazing runner of this game. He has a beginner's tutorial for 100% covering both routes. Um, and kind of like the quintessential uh, moves in each one. And then all the strats involved with the new route, as well as all the strats involved with the old route. So definitely check that out. You can also look up Caleb Hart 42. He has um, a somewhat old um, video that shows old route 100%. It's a tutorial. It's pretty good. Um, I have a beginner's tutorial on how to run 100%. Um, but yeah. So I hope that 
this kind of encouraged maybe somebody to want to get out there and maybe run it. Uh, I just wanted to kind of create a video to show you like what you need to know to start running the game. Not necessarily like very difficult strats, but just strats in general or just ideas behind movement to get you started. Um, a couple of th more things. Um, ways to practice. I would just get to the end of the game, write the password down for the Sigma levels to where you have 100%, and I would just take that and I would just play through all the different levels um, and only use the um, special weapons you would have at that time. And just, uh, you can use that to just play around on, get used to the movement more, grind it a little bit, and just eventually, you know, get your times um, down more and more. And the more you play, the better you'll get. Like, and especially with this game, like, this game's movement is way easier than I'd say Super Metroid is. Um, and actually, it's not really that difficult in general. It can be difficult, but, uh, yeah. So basically, um, I hope this video kind of aided in, um, maybe getting some new runners out there. Because we definitely, we definitely need some, so. Uh, yeah, also, if you hit up one of the runners in the community, you can get a pra an nifty practice ROM like this, where you can go around and practice the routes. But yeah, anyway, I hope this helped, and I hope you guys and gals um, get hyped and speedrun some Mega Man X. Alright, this has been uh, Stunt Coyote, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.